Hello and welcome, I'm BBK Dragoon, and today I'm going to be talking about practicing efficiently, one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing to do in StarCraft 2, aside from actually playing the game. This video will aim to offer the newer StarCraft 2 player a platform to begin improving very quickly and maintaining a positive attitude throughout practice. The game in the background is a TBZ here on Whirlwind. I am a Platinum Terran player, a top 8 Platinum, that doesn't really matter until you're in Masters, right? Uh, just been playing macro style. I learned in Wings Liberty, Filter Starcraft style. This is going to be a 15 gas expand into some Hellion play. The Zerg is going to go for a very fast three base build, which leaves him very vulnerable to the style of uh, Hellion harass that the Terran can do off of the 15 gas expand. Um, what have I been doing on the ladder? Basically, the last three weeks I've been in about top eight platinum. I haven't been practicing much because school right now, taking up a lot of my time. Finals week is this week. I aim to still get videos out there. Uh, I haven't been practicing nearly as much just because I'm focusing on school, but when the semester finishes, I am definitely gonna work very hard to try and get into diamond and then potentially uh, masters is the ultimate goal. So on to achieving the proper mindset that you need to understand um, to practice efficiently. And what I mean by this is you need to have the proper mindset to understand what standard macro play revolves around in order to practice efficiently. So I have got 10 things here that all are associated with macro play and will help you improve if you kind of digest and understand these things. And all of these things I'm telling you are going to take uh, practice and time uh, but if you actively understand these things, you're going to improve much faster than the player who's not looking for these things. So number one, um, having the minimum defense possible with your accumulated knowledge from scouting and knowing your opponent's timings. By this I mean you want to continue with your build, in this case this 15 gas expand, um, as quickly as possible. And I don't want to alter my build very much at all. Notice, I saw he expanded, so immediately I'm thinking, all right, I don't have to worry about a super early bust or a six pool, potentially. So I know I can expand on the low ground, most likely, and get away with it. Oh my goodness, that car outside is super loud. There's a huge truck or something on my street. Anyway. Upgrade complete. Uh, da, 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 yeah, yeah. So because of this information, though, let's say I did scout him and it looked like he was going to go for a total bust. That is part of what I'm saying. Having the minimum defense possible with your accumulated knowledge from scouting and the timing. So if I knew he was going to do a baneling bust, I knew I, you know, I would then need to get bunkers and a wall off uh, immediately, as quickly as I can, which would really s slow the build down essentially. But it would be the minimum defense possible to still survive. Notice I see he took a third, so now I'm going to immediately go into very aggressive hellion play. But I'm not altering my build. Uh, much at all. Back here at home, the build is going to stay very much the same. So, number two, knowing when to stop being greedy and understand when your opponent is being too greedy and punish him. This is a great moment for that. Now, I'm not being too greedy in this moment. If I was being too greedy, I'd be grabbing a third base right now, which you definitely can do against TVZ. But I'm going to punish this guy because I know he's not going to have a ton of units out anytime soon because he took that third base. I'm going to have enough Hellions to at least get in there and hopefully uh, get some drones out of there and get some scouting information. Number three, do not rely on static defense. Um, something I did in the lower leagues and something that I still continue to do is uh, I freak out if I think drop play is coming or if I think mutas are coming and instead of just getting like one or two turrets, I'll go crazy and spend, you know, three, four hundred minerals on turrets and that's static defense. Imagine if he doesn't even use those mutas to attack my SCVs back there. That's almost enough money uh, right there for an expansion. Uh, three more barracks, four more barracks. So be very careful to not rely on static defense. Only get what you need. Number four, execution time for keystrokes. Minimum strokes to do the maximum amount of work. This is something I really, really struggle with because I spam a lot in my gameplay just because I like to keep my fingers fresh and warm. But this spamming ultimately leads to some pretty inefficient keystrokes where I'm like rattling through keys that don't need to be tapped when I could just do a simple action by one keystroke. This is something that's going to take a very long time to practice and learn and understand. Um, and I'm working on it in the background. Number five, this is also something I struggle with and I think most players do. Once you have an advantage, understanding when to take use of that advantage and not lose that advantage. This one is really hard. This one is like super, super hard. In the 
in the way that um, you're probably going to lose a lot of games. But this comes down to watching the replays. And when you watch a replay, uh, honestly, after the game, and you're like, okay, I had way more units here. I had way more workers. Why did I lose? Why did I make this bad decision here? And that comes through practice. But if you are looking for those advantages, you're going to improve much faster. Number six, destroying bad habits. I can tell you guys there are so many bad habits in this game right here. Um, the fact that I'm microing these Hellions so much, my macro back home isn't falling apart, but it could be doing much better. Most of the time, unless you're a high level player, you want to minimize the amount of micro and maximize the amount of macro. You don't want to be floating a ton of minerals. Now, I don't float too many, but always in these little micro sequences, unless you're just a very skilled or high level player, you're going to start to float minerals. So it's definitely more beneficial to stay home uh, a lot of the time and macro up. And by stay home, I mean... It doesn't mean you change the timings of your build. I still have to punish him. I still have to come in here and do some sort of damage because he's on three base and I'm on two base. But the fact of the matter is, I still need to be buying things at home. Look, the eBays are late. I'm coming back and I'm having to buy a flurry of stuff. Those are bad habits. But in this game, it ends up working out quite well um, just because he was very greedy and I'm starting to call his bluff on it and this build is still pretty good. And while my macro is flawed, it's certainly not terrible and it's also, um, you know, something to work on in practice and it's part of this video is learning how to practice right. So watching your own gameplays and replays back is part of that. Number six, uh, we just did, destroying bad habits. Number seven, have confidence to ladder, guys. Don't worry about ladder points. Just get out there and start playing on the ladder. Unranked is fine, but I just would encourage you to start playing on the ladder. The points don't mean a whole lot, and they mean virtually nothing. It's a nice environment to practice, and you're going to run into people who are all aspiring to win and less silly stuff. So, Number eight, blame yourself for the losses, but don't get frustrated. StarCraft II is a game where, basically... All the responsibility is in your hands. If you lose, it's not the game's fault, it's not the other player's fault. It is your fault. You did something wrong, you didn't scout, you didn't have enough units, you macroed poorly, you had not enough workers, you didn't take advantage of certain things. There's nobody to blame but yourself. Don't get frustrated because of this. Uh, number nine, we are here to improve when we're on the ladder. We're here to improve, not trying to win, you guys. We're trying to improve things by our benchmarks, our builds, our standard timings, and macro play that's what we're looking for. To leave you off here on number 10 and the last uh, things I'm going to say here is never rely on a build that relies on your opponent to make a mistake. I know that's a lot of rely, but by that I mean don't cheese, you guys. Standard macro play basically ensures if you play your build out correctly and you defend well, you will win. And you macro correctly, you will win. It's, it's, it's great. It's very hard, though, and it takes a very long time to learn, but it's very rewarding. So to leave off here as the Zergi Poo has nothing left as the Hellions have done their job, um, number one, always warm, warm up before the ladder with a quick AI game. Understand the benchmarks of your build and make sure you hit them before you ladder. Number two, turn your sound off, guys. This is super helpful. Uh, this will punish your opponent, uh, or excuse me, this will punish you for not looking at your supply or the minimap. Two skills that are absolutely required for StarCraft 2. And number three is watch every replay. I hope these are enough tips to keep you guys going. Have a good rest of your day. Let me know if you uh, have any specific questions down below. Let me know also if you like this uh, video, if you enjoyed it, you can hit the like button. Like, yeah. All right. Have a good one on BBK Dragoon. Cheers.